you something. Where is your confidence? Where does it lie at? What are you basing it on? Are you basing it on Sister Hooten and John, what they said? Are you basing your confidence on maybe another what another Christian says? Because I'm going to tell you something this morning. Everything don't work the same. What will work for one Christian won't work for another. You must have the Word of God in season all times, out of times and in times for your life. Because your life is running a different parallel sometimes, most all the time, than Sister Hootenanny's. So what we'll do for her will not do for you. What uh, work for Brother John, because he's Brother John, might not work for you. You must hear from the Word of God. You must hear God. Amen. It's essential in this day and time that we hear from the Lord, that we know the Word of God. This is our roadmap. But that we have a personal personal relationship with the Lord and that we hear his voice. Amen. 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 So the king says, now I want you to tell me, what are you basing this confidence you've got so on? You say you have strategy and military strength and sometimes we feel like, you know, the enemy are telling us, you don't have any strength. You don't have any means. And you still got that confidence God's coming through for you. Well, my Bible tells me in Hebrew, faith, now faith, is not substance of anything you have or anything you see, but calling things that are not as though they were. Oh, I can't do that, Pastor. I'd be lying. Yeah, honey, you're lying if you don't believe it. But the Lord uses your words to create miracles in your life or destruction in your life, the way you talk. Amen. He said, you don't have any strategy. You don't have any force, any military force. But you speak only empty words. The enemy will tell you, well, now look there, honey. That didn't happen for so-and-so, and and you believe in it. Well, maybe so-and-so didn't serve God like you did. Maybe they ain't spent their lifetime on their knees or before God or trying to please God. Maybe they bit their lips when they wanted to say something in the flesh, and God wouldn't let them. But maybe you just did what you wanted to. Maybe you did the things that was easy for you. Serving God is a wonderful thing, but it always cost you something. Oh, 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 yeah. It costs you something to serve God. And any time you don't put yourself out for God, you ain't really serving Him. I'll just call it like I see it and call it like this Bible says. It's going to cost you something. He said, you know, the devil comes and says, you just spoke empty words. Now, I'm going to tell you, beloved, this morning, if you've been feeling dead, whoop, I'll raise my head up first. You feel dead? Feels like there's no substance there when you say anything? That you just are praying and it's hitting the wall and bouncing back down? Amen. And the devil said, now look here, you've been going through this, and no, you still believe all that. You actually believe that? He'll try to make you feel empty. He'll try to make your words empty. He says, you're only depending on empty words. Oh, whom are you depending? That you rebel against me. Now this king thinks he's so powerful. And the enemy thinks to you, says to you, you know, why are you rebelling? It ain't going to do you no good. Why are you standing and believing God? You have to get an attitude that sometimes that the devil just can't stand, a stinky attitude as I call it. Now, not to people, but a stinky attitude towards the devil. You're going to tell him, I'm going to depend on God no matter what I see. No matter how it feels. God said it's not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit. And when you have no contacts, to make you be great or to help you or to undergirl you or uh, to go on, God will be there. That's when you realize it's not you, that you're relying completely upon the Lord. 
People say, I rely on God. Watch them not have a job. Will they pay the tithes if they can get a hold of a dollar anyway? Amen, Miss Sister Brenda. Will they come to church? Will they say that guy should come to church? Or will they ride everywhere else? Ooh, I better ease back off of that. Amen. <laughs> but it's true. You'll soon, soon, soon see where people's heart really is at when the test is going on. Everybody can say, I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. But when you put your hands to the plow, amen. Is your words empty? Or do you know who you're depending on? That you can come against the enemy. He said, you're, you're depending on Egypt. That's been a reef of a staff, which pierces a man's hands and wounds it if he leans on it. And if you say to me, we are depending on the Lord our God, isn't he the one that the high places that Hezekiah removed? He said, you messed up. Da-da-da-da. You messed up. The devil ever told you you messed up? It ain't going to do you no good to believe God. Amen. Or so-and-so don't think you're worthy of that. <laughs> I'm glad. Like Isaiah said, the rewards of the Lord for me is in God's hands, not man's hands. Amen. Yes, do we all mess up? Yes, we do. And he says, if you say you do not, you're lying, the truth ain't in you. Amen. We mess up. We are flesh and blood and we mess up. But glory be to God, we have a, a covenant with our Father that he said, come unto me, lay it unto my feet and I'll bring you out. Let me tell you something. You ain't serving a messy, messy God. You're not serving a God that you can put in your little brain and figure him out. You're serving a great, mighty, awesome God, people. A God that holds the nation in his hand. That he says a pea is like a drop in the bucket to, uh, with a nation. Open your mind and say, God, expand my mind in how great you are. If you really mean it, God will. He says, oh, you ain't served God. Hezekiah's removed the worshiping places. And you still think God, God's going to come through for him? Come now, make a bargain with your ma my master, the king. And I will give you 2,000 horses. Oh, my goodness. The, the devil tell you, no, you can do this, and I'll bless you anyway. He said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give you riders to go on them. I'll give you all a chariots and horsemen. Furthermore, I've come to attack and destroy this place without the work. Have I come? He said, he's lying to them. He said, did I come and say I was going to do this? The Lord told me to do this. You better not listen to other Christians tell you God said Listen, you know that God uses them in that span. A right stranger, you better not listen to. There's people running around saying, God said, God told me. I tell you, even if it comes from your pastor's mouth, both of them, you pray and ask God what that is. But you better be prayed up. You better know the voice of God. Oh, hallelujah. He says to them, hmm, God told me to come destroy y'all. To march against this country and destroy it. Sometimes people say, well, the devil's letting that happen. The devil's doing that. No. And the devil, you, listen, we let things happen. Yeah. The devil fights us. Enough, but we yield to him. We give him everything he needs to work. If you start snatching your tools back from him and using them against him, you'll find out he can't do as much. And if he does, God's going to bring you out of it anyway. Victory on every side and every hand. Glory be to God. In the 28th verse he says, Then the commander stood and called out in Hebrew, Hear the word of the great king, the king of the Syrians. This is what the king says, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you. He cannot deliver you from my hands. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, The Lord will surely deliver us. Now listen to me. God is wanting people to be fully persuaded and have confidence no matter what touches their life, no matter what comes up on the face of the earth, that he will bring you through. Remember what he says in the New Testament. He said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. You are of my kingdom. My kingdom will win over the world's kingdom any day. Now, it'll look in the natural like you like everybody else in the world and you're going under. But the difference is God will make a distinction. And he will come through for you when others is 
floating out there don't know what they're going to do. When you put your trust in God, when you serve God, it is a great benefit. Because God will show up for you. Oh, if you can't get excited about that, you're dead anyway. I said God will show up for you. Woo! I feel it running up and down my spine. Let me tell you something. Have you ever had bills and you didn't know how you was going to meet them? Well, you ain't living in the real world. I'm going to raise my hand. Have you ever really needed something you didn't tell a soul? Telling everybody in poor mouth and ain't trusting God. But you told the Lord. And you're depending on Him to come through. And to your great amazement, don't act like you believed He really would. To your great amazement, He shows up. And just on time, I mean. Looks like it's past time, but on time. Hallelujah. He says, don't you let Hezekiah make you believe God's going to deliver you. Now, beloved, I'm going to tell you, the devil work over time when you're going through something to make you think God ain't going to deliver you, that God ain't going to come through. But God is true to his word. Now, I'm going to tell on my own self. I'd be all right when it passed out. Now, some of you were with me when God spoke to me in South Carolina and told me where this ministry was going to. And I know that was truly a servant of God that God, and I knew that was God that spoke it. And then you heard God speak through Dr. Brenda Ray where this ministry's going. And I could tell you others, goes on all the way back, the K part just right on, right on. And you, you've heard me tell through the years, all the years we've been in the church, where God was taking this ministry. But some of you never believed it. Because you're always looking at what is. And I'm looking at what is not what he said would be. And you know, the devil came to me, and when you are sick in body, the devil will try to mess with your mind and your faith. And he said, now you don't really think, oh, that's going to ever happen, do you? And I said, you heathen from hell, you. Yeah, I believe it's going to happen. Because God said in his word, uh, blessed is he that trusteth in the word of God. That don't just mean this Bible, it means what God speaks to us. And cursed is the man. That, don't, that leans to the arm of flesh. I said, ain't no flesh going to help me get there. I know that. Uh, it, God is going to do it. It'll be the spirit in that flesh if they do. It'll still, I'll still God, give God the glory because it'll be the spirit of the living God. Yes. Now, people, because they see you do certain things. Amen, me. Because they see you move in the depths of God or the spirit of God or whatever. They say, oh, they ain't nothing to that. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. But they don't want to pay the price to do that. And they ain't sold out to God, so therefore they can't do that. And the, the third thing, God didn't call them to do that. Yeah. They ain't one call no greater than another. And I try to tell people this. If you're an intercessor, that's one of the greatest calls there is. Yeah. That you intercede and break yokes for other people's lives. Yeah. There ain't no big eyes and little use in the kingdom of God. We are all the same in God. And if we are used to God, God just wants to use us. Yeah. But you know, that's why I believe many of a man or woman start out with God, but they begin to think they're the one that's running the show. They're the ones that's doing things. And that won't work, honey. Amen. You must know in your heart, not just in your head, that God is your source. You're, you're relying upon Him. This must be so in your daily walk that He is the confidence you hold on to. He is the one that you're trusting. You're not trusting who's there for you, who's egging you on, who's there. I tell you, in the midnight hour, there won't be nobody there, but the Lord will show up. The Lord will show up, honey. In the midnight hour, he'll come through. And I don't mean just the midnight hour of the natural hour. I'm talking about the darkest time that you're walking. God will come and intervene if you're looking to him. God told me one time, if you look hard enough, I will appear. Sometimes God's already there and we just don't see him because we're not looking for him. We're looking at the situation. Lift your eyes from the situation and look up to the Lord and realize who you're serving. And when you look up and see who you're serving, you'll be able to walk that walk and talk that walk right with the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 So he says, don't let Hezekiah make you believe that God's going to deliver you. Do not listen to Hezekiah. This is what the king said. Make peace with me and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat uh, his own wine and from his fig trees and drink water from his own cistern until I come and take you to the land like your own, a land of grain and you wine and a bread and a vineyard. The devil tell you, I'll give you so much, blah, blah, blah. You can go out and get you a new Cadillac. Oh, hallelujah. But he didn't tell you them payments is coming every month. 
See, the devil tells part truth. He said, now choose life and not death. He said, because you're going to die if you don't go my way. The devil tells you, you're going to have, have it now. You know you're going to have that. It runs in your family. <laughs> life now. You need to be life and not be good. Oh, my God. He'll say, you know your forefathers, they had heart problems. It's going to send down on you. Well, you know, so-and-so's got a watheritis in their bones. You're going to have it. You got to tell him, no, no, uh, 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 hold it, hold it. I've been born again. I'm of a new lineage. I'm of a generation. I'm of a holy God. I'm a God, serve a God that heals. I won't have heart trouble. I'm going to have the heart that God wants me to have. I'm going to have the body God wants me to have. Though the enemy puts things on me, I'm going to shake it and pray to it comes off. Somebody's going to help touch God for me and I'm going to help touch God for them. And the wheel of the cycle of the glory of God goes around and around and around. And the devil can't stick you in the mud and stop you as long as you believe God. He'll try to slow you down. He'll tell you now you got this disease and you ain't never going to come out of it. I don't see them this morning, but somebody called in. I won't tell their name. Or I won't steal their thunder in case they get to come tonight. They called in and told that they had a disease and they just, uh, of something that was really major. Uh, in Birmingham, and God called them out, and they'd been taking treatments, and God told them not to quit taking them treatments, take those treatments, but he was going to heal them. And, uh, you know, they, to them doctors, there's no healing for that. You know, and they ain't going to say she's healed, but they told her she didn't need the medicine so, no more, so guess what? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Just like Jesus said. The minute the Lord speaks the word, like the soldier in Jesus said to him, said, go, your son, your servant is healed. And the minute he said it, and he took him at his word. When you take Jesus at his word, honey, hell can't stop what he's programmed for you. He said in Isaiah, what I purpose, it shall stand. What I plan, it shall come to pass. God's got great plans for this ministry. I don't care. I don't care what you're thinking this morning. Some of you are looking at how few people here. Oh, honey, I'm looking at how great the people are here. I'm looking at how big this church is all over the world. Uh, you know, even people I ain't yet got to minister to, that's yet a part of me, that's yet in my bosom. That's what I'm looking at. You better be looking at that. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, if you do this, you do that, you'll have the good land, you'll get this. But let me tell you something, honey. When God gives it, it's the best. You don't have to give back, you don't have to struggle, and you don't have to worry. Amen. He said, do not listen to Hezekiah, for he is misleading you when he says the Lord will deliver us. Has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hands of the king? Where are the gods? Where are the gods that delivered them? Who are all the gods of these countries has been able to save his land from me, he said. Boy, he thinks highly of himself. How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? You know, the devil tells you, well, you know, this is a killing disease you got. You're going to die. You ought to turn around and say, yeah, one day we all are, but we're going, when we die, we're going to really live. We're going to be with the Lord Jesus. He won't know what to do when you tell him that. Hallelujah. See, his, his tool is he can put enough fear in you and enough doubt in you. And you won't hold the confidence of God. The people remain silent. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, you shut up. Shut up. Some people run up to people that's had a loss. I, you know, maybe the God allowed it, or maybe it was the devil. I, you know, God's going to, it's going to be better. They don't know what to say. It'd be better if they just shut up and said, I love you, I'm praying for you. You know, sometimes you don't know how to reply to something. Those are no words to reply. But the people remain silent. And said nothing in reply. Because the king had commanded me, do not answer him. Oh, hallelujah. Now in the 19th chapter, and I'm going to try to draw this to a close. It says, this is what Hezekiah says. This is a day, a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace. Have you ever been stressed out? Felt disgraced because it seemed like people say, well, I knew that was going to happen to them. They think they got some, oh. I'm talking straight today because some people said this about this shepherd here. And I'm going to point my thumb this way. 
Ah, but you know, she thinks she's something. No, I, but I know who God is, and I know he's something. Yes. And let me tell you, she believes that's going to happen, but look at all the hell that's sitting there. She must be living bad. She's sick. If she can say heal others, let her heal herself. I can't heal a fly, honey. It's only God through me. Go on, wag that tongue. You ain't hurting me. You hurting you. Hello. He says, it's a day of rebuke and dis uh, disgrace. Sometimes when we go through things, you know, I've went through things, uh, I ain't talk about myself because I know me. I've went through some hellish things in my life since I've been a minister and had to hold my head up and walk in this place and people whispering behind my back talking about me. But they didn't put their feet where I put mine. They sure did not. And that, therefore, there was a relationship with me and God and let them talk on. Oh, yeah, it was hard to do. But I knew the Lord was with me. I knew he was going to bring me out. Amen. Always has and always will. Always. He says, it's when children come to the point of birth and there's no strength to deliver them. It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander whom has his master, the king of Assyrians, has sent to ridicule the living God. Now Hezekiah said, now God, he is ridiculing you. He is making fun of you. The devil will make fun of how you serve God. He'll use other Christians to do it. He'll use old sinners to do it. But he'll ridicule you if you, you, know, if you really serve God. Get ready for it. People say, well, they're just the fanatic. they just to God, God, God. You can't get too much God, God, God. Amen. 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 He says, there was a remnant that prayed that still survived. When King Hezekiah officials called to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, tell your master, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. And I'm going to tell you this morning, God is saying to you, beloved, do not be afraid. Fear has gripped the nation. Fear has gripped the land. Do not be afraid. God has sources you do not even know about. God has supplies you do not even know about. He said in Philippians, I shall meet thy needs according not to the land, but according to my riches in glory. If God don't have it on earth, he can create it and send it down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your master, this is what the Lord says, do not be afraid of what you hear, those words with which are underlined of the king of the Syrians have blessed me. Listen, he said. I'm going to put such a spirit in him that he will hear a certain report. He's talking about the king that's against him. He's going to hear a certain report, he says. And when he hears this certain report, he will, will return to his own country. Hello. And I will cut him down with swords. Now, this kingdom, to sum this up, he sends a messenger to Hezekiah. Say to Hezekiah, King of Jews, do not let the gods you depend on deceive you when he says, Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king. Surely you have heard that all the kings have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will, will you be delivered? He said, you have to decide that. Will you be delivered? Yes, you will. And Hezekiah spreads this letter out before God and he prays. Somebody's praying. Somebody's praying for you. Somebody's praying for me. And he spreads that letter out. And he says, God, you God of the earth and the heavens, give ear, O Lord, and open their eyes, O Lord, and let them listen and let them know that you are still, that, that the king is insulting a living God. And I'm going to tell you what happened to this king. God sent hailstorms, a hailstorm, and 85,000 soldiers was killed by the hand of that angel. 85,000. And the rest of them said, well, we've had it. Their God is fighting for them. We've got to go home. Hallelujah. Let us get out of Dodge. When the Lord starts fighting for you, the devil started backing up, backing up. He'll say, whoa, that child really don't just talk it. That child just don't hit church once one. That child lives it. That child talks it. That child says the right thing. That child does the right thing. That child is mine. God will let the devil go so far on you, but if you'll stand, you're testing to see if you'll believe God anyway. If you'll hold fast, you're confident. 
and, and God, and your words is always, yes, Lord, you will. Lord, I believe you will. I don't, it don't matter how it looks. It don't matter how I feel. You are God. You will. You said you would. So therefore, I believe you, Lord. If you hold tight to that, then the devil says he can't bring that down. Then let me tell you something. He'll start backing off. Or God will send an angel and cut him down like nobody's business. A mouth can run so long against you. And uh, so long in the land. But if it's a negative mouth and all it does is talk negative, if they don't change and God will try to change their spirit, God will wipe them off the face of the earth. You say, oh, that's horrible. Oh, no, it's not horrible. Better that God would do that than they destroy a whole bunch of people. Amen. Oh, but really God didn't destroy them. They destroyed themselves with their mouth. You can destroy yourself with your own mouth. You can destroy what's good around you with your own mouth. You know what? Now, I'm going to pick on him. When Brother Darrell went to Birmingham and got diagnosed that you're not going to live six months, this is going to wipe you out. Well, he didn't come sit in the office and say, Pastor, they said, I'm going to die in six months. But God told him down here, through his spirit, because God knows everything, that you won't die, you will surely live, you're going to conquer this, that you, they will live to see that I am in you. And let me tell you something. Brother Dare went and done what they said, but he, every time they told him that, he counteracted it with the faith of God. He is free. Free indeed today. You know we get freed by holding that confidence and God comes through. Now he'll even put something on you and it'll, you can see it sometimes. And he'll say, look at that now. Look at that. But you have to shake your head as though to shake him out and say, I will not look at that. I'm looking to God. God's greater than that. God's greater than that. This dynamic message is available on CD and DVD in its entirety. To order your copy, visit us online at www.pathwaytolife.net or give us a call at 334-262-4569. Please reference the title of this message when ordering. Because God said, when the Spirit liveth in you, and when you walk in the Spirit, He said, out of your belly shall come flows of rivers of living water overflowing. And when that water is already in you, that living water of God, it will flow to it overspills on somebody else. And the thirst of that for what they have need of God shall be manifested and they shall feel the presence of God. And when you begin to praise God, Thank you for watching Pathway to Life. If you're in the Montgomery area, we invite you to visit us at Bethel Pathway Church. Our service times are Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. and 6.30 p.m. with Wednesday night prayer services at 7 o'clock p.m. Come, you will be blessed.